Hi, it's Andy, and today we're doing a book tour. So I've been invited by Eric from Break Even Books to take part in the book tour for The Secret Life of Sophonisba and Rosola by Melissa Muldoon. This book is a fictionalised version of the life of real woman Sophonisba Anguissola, who existed in the 16th century and was a fantastic, severely talented painter in a time when women were not allowed to do such things or not encouraged to do such things. And as part of this book tour, I've been asked to give my honest review on this book and was supplied by Eric and Melissa uh, a copy of this as an ebook. And I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed it. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm just going to read you the synopsis, which I have over here because I'm not remembering that. I have a terrible memory. We all know this. So I'll read you out the synopsis and let you know what this is about. Set in the 16th century, the secret life of Sophonisba and Wissola tells the story of a woman's passion for painting and adventure. In a world where women painters had little to no acknowledgement, she was singled out by Michelangelo and Vasari, who recognised and praised her talent. Gaining the Milanese elite's acclaim, she went on to become court painter to the Spanish king Philip II and taught his queen to paint. One can't live such an extraordinary life without having stories to tell and tell them so funny but does to Sir Anthony Van Dyke who comes to visit her towards the end of her life. During the meeting she agrees to reveal her secrets but first challenges the young painter to find the one lie hidden in her tale. In a saga filled with intrigue, jealousy, buried treasure, unrequited love, espionage and murder, Sophonisba's story is played out against the backdrop of Italy, Spain and Sicily. Throughout her life she encountered talented artists, authoritative dukes, mad princes, religious kings, spying queens, vivacious viscounts and dashing sea captains, even a Barbary pirate. But of all the people who fell in love with Sophonisba, only one captured her heart. Sophonisba had many secrets, but only she knows the whole truth. If that synopsis doesn't grab your attention, I don't know what will because this has everything in it, this synopsis. And I'll be honest with you, I did not expect it to be able to live up to that synopsis, but live up to it, it did. So as you all probably know by now, I am quite an avid historical fiction reader and this is a time in which I don't normally read as much. So normally I stick to World War II historical fictions, I am getting more into other types of historical fictions, but one of my favourites is Kate Moss. And Kate Moss is a fiction writer who writes kind of roughly within the same time zone as this. And I have to say the similarities in the styles is quite striking. So if you like Kate Moss, I truly believe you will love this book and I really, really think you should pick it up. Also for people who like books that go in the style of Evelyn Hugo, so someone telling their life to an interviewer, this is again that sort of story. Although it doesn't come out and in and out and in, so it doesn't really drag you out of the story in that way. This book sort of caps off each end with Sophonisba talking to Sir Anthony. So at the start is when he arrives at the home and she tells him that she's going to tell him the story of her life. And at the end again, once she's finished that story. This does take place, so during the time of her life between the ages of about 18 to 20 to about 35 to 40. So it's that span of time that we're looking at. And she had the most interesting life in that amount of time. Like what she did was incredible. And this is a fictionalised version of a real person's life. So she did exist. She did meet all the people that our writer has her meet. It's just that the private conversations and situations are fictionalised, which is something I absolutely love. I love learning about real people through fictionalised stories because it gives me that spur to go and look them up. And it just brings them to life, brings history to life in a way that is done so, so well. So firstly, I'm going to go over the character work. So character-wise, we only really see it from Sophonisba and then we do have the Duke of Alba's point of view. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it because Alba is Scotland in Gaelic. So I automatically want to say Alba, which is the Gaelic form. Um, I'm going to say Alba, that's what I was saying in my head. So the Duke of Alba, you do have some little portions in this from his point of view. I believe we start off with like a little prologue from him and then we get little dots of his point of view throughout, which added a little interesting sort of view of the idea of obsession that came into this book quite a lot. And it just, it just sort of 
deepen the story that a little bit more. The majority of this book is from Sophonisba's point of view and to me she has a really interesting outlook on things. She was raised in a family of mostly girls. She's the eldest daughter and the eldest, you know, full stop. And yet her parents encouraged her with her art, encouraged her sisters with their other passions. And in the 16th century, that's not very heard of. So she grew up in a fantastic home, had a fantastic childhood, and then is allowed to pursue her passions where she meets and is tutored under Michelangelo, of all people. Like, I don't like art. Like, it's not I don't like art. I don't get art. I understand things are pretty. I don't get the whole fascination with it and the whole, like, deeper meaning and the... I mm -mm, don't get art. Music, yes. Art, no. But even I know Michelangelo, and even I know Michelangelo is, like top tier she caught the eye of michelangelo and he was like you're gonna you're gonna train under me and i'm gonna make you a better artist and yes he did this is a fantastic sort of woman to write about because she is probably not that well i mean the tagline is the most famous one you've never heard of and it's true in this book she is to me a bit naive a lot of the time and i don't know if that's something to do with the way she was brought up in a family that was so open and so kind but throughout this entire book now bear in mind like i say it starts off with her giving a sort of interview in her 90s and then we go back to when she's in her 20s and yet she gets herself into situations because she's so naive that are dangerous that are situations where i wouldn't trust anybody and being an avid reader of books i don't trust anybody like somebody seems like they're being too nice or suddenly nice when they were being cruel before don't trust you Left alone with a man, don't trust you. Especially in the 16th century. You know, that sort of situation. So Fanisba is somebody who, for me, I felt was very naive and got herself into these situations because she kind of expected the best in people. And she gave the best of herself to people. Like, she was always genuine and always honest, so she expected that from other people. And, girl, you think she'd learn. But throughout this book, I found myself terrified for her life like I genuinely my heart was in my throat I genuinely thought oh god this is it something's going to go terribly wrong forgetting the fact that she's doing the interview in her 90s so obviously she's fine but the fact that the writer is able to get you to the point where although you know in the back of your head that she's fine you're still scared in that moment you still feel that fear for the character that's just unbelievable craft right there can I just say like well done I I bet down Melissa fantastic job I really really the only thing like I say she was quite naive that was the only thing that kind of irked me is that she was quite naive but you know that's I don't know if that's just the way she was generally and it's been pulled up history from diaries and things like that or if Melissa just decided that it would kind of go in that direction I don't know but that was the only thing I, I wasn't quite so keen on is the fact that she was so quite naive Otherwise, the characters were so well written, like, because you get to see from Sophonisba's point of view, you're getting quite a broad spectrum of people because she sits with subjects to do their paintings and she gets to talk to them for ages. And she spends so much time in the royal court that you get to see all these different characters, all these people that are real and the way that they have been done to make them seem so real to the reader is just fabulous everybody's so well-rounded and you get a good idea like i understood when a character changed their behavior even subtly like i understood that something was going on and that to me is just you know i love it when a writer can do that to you where even if it's not somebody who you're getting their point of view you don't know where they're thinking but because they've rounded out the character so well you do understand what they're thinking if that makes any sense at all i'm just gonna move on atmosphere she made a fantastic atmosphere it did such a good job of taking you back she didn't embellish on big historical things like she didn't go into great detail that i've seen some other historical fictions do to kind of plant you in the time but she did enough so that it wasn't it was enough to set you in the time but not enough to want you go and like pick apart oh was that style of shoe in fashion or like oh but that ruby wasn't found until like it wasn't so specific that she left herself room for error 
but it was expansive enough and it was detailed enough to give you that feel. So I always felt, like I say, I still felt like I was back in that I still felt when she's walking down the street at night. Sorry for whistling. I still felt when she was walking down the street at night and heard footsteps. I was like, oh God. Like, you felt the atmosphere with her and it took you back to a time when I know nothing about, really, but I could feel myself back there. It was, I'm really bad at this, but it just, mm, believe me, it was really, really good. This book really does do what it sets out to do. The synopsis really is a fantastic snippet of what this book gives you. It gives you her life as she meets these people, as she goes through becoming a painter and as she meets all these different people, like it says, dukes, artists, kings, princes, sea captains, pirates. It's It hits on every single point. You know when you read a synopsis and, and you, you read the book and you're like, okay, that's either in the last five minutes, the first five minutes, it spoils the book or it doesn't tell you anything. This, this, is, this is spot on. It really, really does what it says on the tin. So if this sounds interesting to you, I can promise you, you're going to get what you expect. You're going to get the story that you're expecting to get. It does take a little bit of teasing, so the writing is a little bit more on the poetic side, which isn't a bad thing. It's just not straightforward. So you do have to be paying attention when you read this book. It's not one that you can just like stick in an audiobook while you're doing something else. You need to pay attention to this book because there are nuances dropped into this writing that when you pick up on them, it ties the story together. And again, if you're unlike me and you actually pay attention and you're trying to work out what the lie is, it will pull you in. And there are bits where you're like, oh, well, is that actually like on looking back on reading it? There are so many little bits that she dropped in. And there was even, there was a bit right at the end. Oh my God, sorry. Just bear with me. There's a bit at the end and it's so inconsequential, but it's like her husband comes in and it's not a spoiler this is not a spoiler a husband comes in I'm not actually no I'm not even going to tell you but it's just it ties together it ties together another part of the book and it made me cry a little bit like this teeny weeny little detail that she just like tied tied together so beautifully and I was like there's also a love story tied into this and it really does the setup and the execution and the way that they interact it's just so so just I love them together I really it's not a big like ro it's not a romance if you don't like romance it's fine you will still be able to really get along with this because there is romance in it but it's subtle and it's done in such a way that it makes it it's not in your face but it, you do root for them it's just so so well done. I genuinely really enjoy this book and I would love to talk spoilers with somebody. If you've read it, let me know in the comments and we can talk because there's so many bits of this book that I would love to tease apart and talk about with someone, but I'm not going to spoil this for you. If you want to know why I am like this, go and read the book because I'm telling you, if that synopsis sounds good to you, you'll like the book. It does a perfect job of summing it up, much better job than I can do of summing it up. But I, by the end of it, I was so hooked. By the end of it, I just was completely, I was dreaming about this character. Like I was completely embellished in her life and completely in love with all these characters and all these people that you get to know. I think she's done a fantastic job with this book and would really look forward to reading other books that she's written. She does have a back catalogue. Um, so I'm really excited to maybe have a look into them and then anything in the future that she decides to write. And I'm kind of sad that Sophonisba is a real person because I would love to have more books from her life, but obviously she lived a real life. So what we get is the kind of concentrated, most interesting parts of it. And thank you so much again to Melissa for just writing this book. It was a fantastic read and I'm going to stop rambling now. So again, thank you to Eric from Break Even Books for inviting me on this tour. Um, I hope that after he sees this video, he doesn't discount me from anything else because I know I do ramble. And uh, Incoherence is the birthright of this channel. There will be a tour, so I will try and leave as much detail as I can in the description to let you know where to go next because it will be going on until the second, as you see in my thumbnail. But for now, 
thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.